in Ann Arbor. Michigan leads it 61 to 51 with six ties. Wolverines have won three straight, but prior to that, the Buckeyes had won eight in a row. Renewed. Ohio State won the toss. Deferred. Michigan will receive. Sharon Moore won this game last year, subbing for Jim Harbaugh. However, he went into the season without having the opportunity to pick his own quarterback. It's cost him, but they did become bowl eligible last week with their 50 to 6 win over Northwestern. Oh, by the way, he got his quarterback last week, and the kid was right around the corner. We'll talk about that as this game progresses. Ohio State, Michigan. The game, and here we go. This one into the end zone, and they'll bring it out. Jordan Marshall, and Marshall gets to the 10 yard line. That will bring on the Michigan offense, their starting quarterback, Davis Warren, a walk on back in the starting lineup. He started the season, lost his job, and now he's back. Yeah, he lost his job primarily because of turnovers, he was just turning the ball over way too much. He has solved that, and he's been much better in his last few starts. Did throw a pick last week against Northwestern, but look for them to actually try to throw the ball early. That is how they've evolved offensively here in this season. First down and 10 at the 11-yard line. Warren out of the shotgun. And he'll hand it off on first down, running straight ahead. Kalel Mullings between the tackles offensively. Let's take a look at the Wolverines. This offensive line is not as strong as what they've had over the last couple of years, and they've struggled a little bit, and that's why they've had to go to the perimeter to get loose a little bit. Now, on the outside, a huge development. Colston Loveland not playing today. Their best offensive weapon, the tight end, so they will have to find somebody on the outside. Maybe it's Marlon Klein, the backup tight end, that's going to have to produce at a high level today in the passing game. Second down and Seven at the 14-yard line for Michigan. Mullings, three touchdowns last week against Northwestern. Tries to run over the right side. Bottled up, taken down after a two-yard gain. Tyleek Williams with the tackle defensively for the world-famous Buckeyes. This is, right now, the best defense in America. They are number one in scoring defense, number one in total defense. They have veterans all over the field and maybe one of the best players in America and Caleb Downs. And watch number two, because number two is going to be around the line of scrimmage a lot, trying to sniff out this run game and make it difficult on Michigan quarterback Davis Warren to try to throw the football over the middle. Third down and five at the 16, opening series for Michigan. Mullings remains in the game. Tyler Morris in motion. Warren steps up in the pocket, delivers across the middle, and he completes his first pass. Great omen for the Wolverines. A gain of 14. Tyler Morris with the catch. Well, Tyler Morris, he had a great game against Northwestern. Seven catches and really emerged for them on the outside. Good little route right there against zone defense. The coverage from Ohio State. But more specifically, Gus, how about the time that that offensive line gave their quarterback? Warren was able to survey. That back end of the defense, step up in the pocket and find a completion. Warren having one of his best games of the season last week against the Wildcats, 26 of 35, 195, a touchdown, and a pick. First down at the 30. Here's the handoff. Mullings again. And he'll gain four on the play. And as Michigan knows, you know, this is a team that wants to grind it out. They want to run the football. Over the last couple of weeks now, they've They've tried to get the ball on the perimeter in order to open up that run game. But in this matchup, Sharon Moore knows it. Over the last three years, the reason Michigan has beaten Ohio State is that they've won the line of scrimmage. And this offensive line, which is not what they've had in the past, they're going to have to do that against a veteran, deep, and very talented Thank defensive line fun, led by guys like Jack Sawyer, 33, the defensive end. Second down and six at the 34-yard line. Mullings, the pistol back. And they'll give it to him straight ahead. Chops his feet. Goes down after a two-yard pickup. Ohio State ready for it. Tackled on the play by no Arvell Reese. I remember last year on we were trying to struggle down, to figure out where Ohio to find State it. Ohio State sat back in zone coverage. They only rushed four. 
That's something that got them in trouble against Oregon. You talked about the change in philosophy, Gus, the evolution of this defense. Part of it has been that they've been pressuring more on these downs. We'll see if Michigan sees a blitz here early. Third down and fourth, the 36 for Michigan. Warren to throw it. Warren underneath, caught. And we'll see if that's enough for first down. Catch made by Merlin Klein, the redshirt sophomore you talked about from Cologne, Germany. Tackled by Denzel Burke. Well, it's going to be quite a bit short here. Here's the route. He's just going to be trying to come across the formation. And this is a really nice job on the far side. Watch Denzel Burke. He was not fooled by that crossing route. He was sitting in his area, ready to make the tackle against the big Klein. And now Michigan's going to have to punt it away. So Michigan. We'll send Tommy Doman onto the field. He'll punt it from the 22-yard line. Low snap handled. He got it away. Caleb Downs, who ran one back last week against Indiana, is the deep man. And this one will trickle out of bounds at the 30. A 44-yard punt. Time for today's game flow, sponsored by Progressive. Ohio State, Michigan, the game from Columbus. Welcome back to Ohio Stadium. No score. Ohio State ready for their first series of the game. And this is what it breaks down to be right now. Well, yeah, for the Big Ten Championship game, Oregon's already in. Ohio State, easy win today, and they are in. Now, if Michigan's able to win, then Penn State would be controlling their own destiny. And if Penn State were to lose, Indiana would get back in the mix and go to Indianapolis. On first down, Will Howard throwing it out wide and it's caught this is Carnell Tate with the reception who gained seven and a half maybe eight Will Howard the Kansas State transfer making his 39th start he's had a spectacular season I think quietly one of the best seasons in all of college football Howard to throw it over the middle caught and a first down for the Buckeyes Carnell Tate back-to-back -back receptions and the first down for them and this offensive line has been shaken up because of injury Carson Hensman is in there at center he started all year last year at center so he's experienced the inexperienced player is now the left guard Austin Saravel now on the outside they've got talent everywhere and that's where they're going to want to attack stay away from this defensive line of Michigan and attack on the perimeter which is exactly what we've seen in the opening two plays first down and 10 of the 48 yard line Travion Henderson right Running left, cuts it up, and he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Derek Moore with the tackle defensively for the Wolverines. Their front four may be the best in all of college football. And that's the advantage that they've got to exploit today, in particular on the inside with Grant and Graham. Their, their edges are fantastic with Moore and Stewart. And then on the back end, Zeke Berry is having Seven. to play for Will Johnson. Will Johnson's going to be a top five pick in the NFL draft. He has not been able to play because of a toe injury. So Zeke Berry, the normal nickel, Gus is out of position on so, the outside playing corner. Second down and 10. Howard guns it near side. Caught out of bounds. Money on the rise. Jeremiah Smith with the catch. Look at the cushion that these corners are playing with. Giving these easy free throws to the Ohio State passing game. That is way too easy for Howard and Jeremiah Smith. Just short of a first down. But you're starting to see now three of the first four plays. Just easy pitch and catch on the outside. And now they bring up a shorter third down scenario here to try to convert. Jeremiah Smith has led Ohio State in receiving seven times this year. Has three 100 yard games. He's only a freshman. Third down and two. At the 44 for the Buckeyes. When Sean Judkins in the game. Howard looking. Howard rolling on the mold caught. At the 30-yard line, guess who? Carnell Tate. A gain of 13 for Tater. Hill with the tackle. Yeah, this is a great job by Tate. So watch Carnell Tate all the way on this back yeah, side. I'm and he's just going to continue to work all the way what across the formation. And he never stops. And then a little acceleration to keep the space. Howard's able to find him after he exited the pocket. And it's another first down for the Buckeyes. Tate already with three catches for 30 yards on the opening series. First down to the 31. Henderson, the lone setback. Play fake. Howard goes deep. He's got a man. Incomplete, but a flag. Jeremiah Smith, the target. 
And Quinn Johnson just grabbed and held on. Pass interference. Defense number 28. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Larry Smith, your referee. Well, Quinn Johnson is beat right here, and Jeremiah Smith is going to catch that ball unless Johnson grabs him. It's actually a good penalty from him because that's going to be six. Smith is too talented, in particular in those one-on-one -on -one situations right there, and then there's the grab of the arm, brings him down, and it's a first down. First down and 10 of the 16 now for the Buckeyes. Henderson, the pistol back. They give it to Travion Henderson, stutter steps, gets to the line of scrimmage, and is driven backwards. Well defended by this Michigan Wolverine team. Well, this red zone offense for Ohio State has been outstanding this year. Last year, they struggled a bit in terms of converting red zone trips into touchdowns, but this year, much different. 84% converting these red zone drives into touchdowns. That's the best in college football. Second down and 10 at the 16. Howard gives it up. Henderson breaks it back with a crease. And he'll dive forward, get to the 11-yard line before being brought down by Cameron Grant. Thus, Ohio State, and we've already seen it play out here on this first drive. They've got a major advantage on the outside. You know, this secondary for Michigan is depleted without Will Johnson. They're playing out of position. And this Ohio State team, they've got loads of talent out there. Third down and five at the 11. Opening series for Ohio State. Ibuka in motion. Howard to throw it. Howard underneath, incomplete, batted down. Nicely done. Makari Page, the senior from West Bloomfield, Michigan, with the pass breakup. Well, and, and Makari Page is one of the, the lone veterans who was on the field last year against this Ohio State team. We get a little contact there. Will Howard still went to Abuka, and it's an incompletion, and that's exactly what Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator, needed is a hold here to a field goal. That's that's in the recipe for Michigan. Hold these drives, even if it's a lengthy drive, Gus, hold them to a field goal. Jaden Fielding coming in to attempt the 29-yarder. Got it up, and Ohio State is on the board first. Michigan holds Ryan Day's offense to a field goal. They'll take it. Three to nothing. Buckeyes on top of the Wolverines in the game. Big new kickoff is sponsored by AT&T Business. Reliability for your business is our business. And by Progressive Insurance. Cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and more. Senior day here at Ohio State. It's been a while since a group of seniors left Ohio State without a win versus Michigan. These nine players all played in each of the last three losses to Michigan. Cody Simon, Josh Pryor, Tyson Williams, JT Tuimoluau, Jack Sawyer, Donovan Jackson, Jordan Hancock, Ty Hamilton, and Denzel Burke. I mean, it's a big reason why they're here. You know, that this group, Gus, came back. A lot of these guys could have been draft picks and been playing in the National Football League, but they came back, and one of the big motivators was this game, this opponent, and the fact that they did not have a pair of gold pants. The tradition here at Ohio State, of course, is that if you get a win over Michigan, every player on the team re receives a, a, a piece of jewelry. Get a fat gold chain. In, in the form of gold pants and the maize pants of the Michigan Wolverines. This group doesn't have that and they wanted one and their goals for this season they start today with a potential win over this Michigan team three zip Ohio State Michigan will get it back into the end zone so coming up let's see if the Wolverines can move the ball on the number one defense in the nation the Ohio State Buckeyes when we return Play today's Fox Super 6 free-to-play game. Download the Fox Sports app right now and enter for free for a chance to win your share of 5,000 big ones in weekly cash prizes. Three to nothing, Ohio State on top. Ryan Day 
He wants to win this one so badly he can taste it. Despite all of the success, the three losses to Michigan have been eating him up. He wants to win for the players, not for himself. And on first down, they'll give it to Donovan Edwards, who's had some big games against Ohio State last couple of years, gains three. Cody Simon with the tackle. You know, my, my question for Michigan is where does the production come outside? Because Colston Loveland not being on the on the field really hurts him. He's a Mackey finalist, best tight end in the country. He's got 50 more targets than any other target Michigan has. In fact, their wide receiver core, you talk about production or lack thereof, the only teams that they're around in terms of wider wider receiver production are academies, and that's not the group you want to be in when it comes to throwing the ball. Second down and seven at the 28. Warren underneath, caught, and a first down. Nicely done. Hogan Hansen with the reception. Michigan not afraid to let Davis sling it. He threw it a career high 35 times last week against Northwestern. Davis's first three games, one touchdown, six picks. His last four games, four touchdowns, one pick. And that, that's a byproduct of them learning who they are this year. And after that national championship run, all those veteran players, in particular on the offensive line, they needed to figure out what they were going to be offensively. And what they've landed on is a team that needs to exploit that passing game early in the down set in order to get to the run later. He's three for three to start. Play action. Checks it down. And it's Donovan Edwards with the catch. He'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. A gain of one on the play. Denzel Burke defensively. Look at the way that he's improved. His completion percentage is around the same as it was the first three games as his last four. But what's different is his ability to not turn the football over. The pass touchdowns to interception ratio, only two touchdowns to six interceptions in those first games. But in the last four, it's been much, much better. And they've also been protecting him a lot better as well, Gus. Only two sacks in the last four. Second down and nine at the 38. Edwards in the backfield with Warren. They'll give it to Edwards. Straight through the hole. Donovan Edwards. With some running room, Ty Hamilton defensively. This Michigan offense feels like they found something last week in that 50 to 6 win against Northwestern especially offensively they what they did is they found a way to stay on schedule and produce third downs like this one goes third and three which is manageable and now here late we did not see this against Northwestern but Alex orgy number 10 is in at quarterback right now when he's in it primarily means that they're running the football third down and three Orgy got a couple of starts this season He'll run it, gets outside, picks up the first down, and more. Orgy with a burst. Orgy all the way down to the Ohio State 25-yard line. That's a gain of 29. Caleb Downs with the tackle. Well, they're going to get caught here on the edge. You see the edge, and at this point, you've got to set it on top, and that's not what happened. So number six, Sonny Styles, he gets caught up in enforcing that edge right there. Bredesen, beautiful block, but Siles doesn't understand where the ball carrier is, and Orgy is around him right away for a big gain on third down. First down and 10 of the 27 now for the Wolverines. Dallel Mullings comes back in at running back. He's the pistol. Bredesen with him. Mullings running right with a hole, dives forward. And Kalel Mullings picks up big time yardage. Denzel Burke with the tackle. That's a gain of eight. Another thing that this offense found, Gus, you talked about what they found here late in the season, is their identity in the run game. Once they can open up the perimeter and get the defense soft, softened up, they have found that they are better in what's called the gap schemes, meaning that they're going to pull offensive linemen and tight ends and H-backs in order to really define the hole for the running back. The old zone style of just all the linemen blocking one direction isn't as good for Michigan, but when they can pull a guy and really get downhill, that's when they're best. And they're running with Mullings once again, and they'll pick up a first down as he drags Ohio State defenders with them. 
Khalil Mullings, 12 carries, 92 yards, a career high, three touchdowns last week against Northwestern. And gained seven here. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the, the gap scheme where you're going to pull the backside guard, so you block down on the front side, pull the guard, he gets a block, and now it's about physical running from Khalil Mullings, and he's able to get down there for a first down. And now they're facing a defense, by the way, Ohio State, as good as they come in terms of the red zone. They're number one in red zone defense, Gus, in the country. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Mullings remains in the game. They'll give it to him straight ahead. It'll get inside the 10. Arvell Reese with the tackle. I believe it's important to keep in mind that Michigan has a dynamite field goal kicker. <laughs> Zvada is terrific. Came in from Arkansas State and Normally, that's what Ohio State has given up in these red zone possessions is field goals, you know, and there's Vada getting loose on the sideline. Although I got to tell you, Sharon Moore, he probably feels it in his face right now. I don't know how you stay loose down there in this windshield. You know what I mean? Second down and eight at the 10 yard line. Warren rolling out of the pocket, looking. Warren fires and he'll just dump this one into the ground. Conservative play, good decision by Warren. That yeah, sure is, and now it comes down to a matchup. We've already seen their young tight end get a target, Hogan Hansen, number 80. And on the field pregame, Gus, I was talking with Sharon Moore, and I said, all right, who do you like on the outside if Colston's not going to be there? And he said, watch out for number 80, our young freshman tight end from Bellevue, Washington. He's 6'5". Hogan Hansen. Third down and eight at the 10. No Colston Lublin. Out with an injury. Warren. Pressure. Fires. And caught. And this time it's Frederick Moore. Short of the first down. Gained seven on third and eight. This one was awfully close. Did he get those arms underneath it? That is very close right there. And Michigan will be up on the ball, ready to snap it. And now the officials will blow it dead. I'm sure that they're going to take another look at this. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. A quick one. Ohio State with the 3-0 lead. But Michigan knocking on the door. Back to Columbus right after this. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Reliability for your business is our business. What a day. What a day. 3-0. Buckeyes on top of the Wolverines in the game. Defending national champions against the number two team in the nation. As we start the second quarter, Michigan on the goal line. Fourth down and one. Wolverines electing to go for it. Kalel Mullings in the backfield nice with Davis Warren. All fourth and one. Out of the eye formation, two tight ends. Straight ahead. I don't know. Ohio State looks like they turned him away. Buckeyes have been great on goal line stands this year. This one looks close. Nobody better in college football when you're talking about defense inside the five-yard line. And it's Ohio State football. They do it again. Great push from the defensive line. Look at him get low. And then there's the fill. Caleb Downs, number two from that safety spot. He comes up and makes the hit along with Tyleek Williams. There's 91 and number two. Mullings needed to get all the way to the two-yard line, clearly short right there, and it is another stand for Ohio State. Now, that wasn't fourth and goal, but Gus, you talk about goal-to-go situations. Nobody in college football has been better. We've seen them make stand after stand after stand during the course of this year. They turned away Oregon, Nebraska, Penn State, Indiana. This has been a remarkable, remarkable defensive front. And how about Kalem Downs? This is why he's up for the Bitneric Award as the best defender in college football, the Thorpe Award, best defensive back. He has been tremendous, in particular stopping the run. And he was great right there on fourth down. 
take a look at it, but partner, he needed to get all the way to the two yard line. And based on the looks that we've looked at where he's contacted by downs, it didn't look like he got there. Dean Blandino, our rules analyst, is with us. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. First down. So Ohio State will get back to Dean later. Ohio State turns Michigan away and will get the football back. I'll tell you, that's what you get from a veteran defensive line. We talk about all these guys, Ty Leak Williams, senior Ty Hamilton, senior Tui Molo, Al Sawyer, all that experience down there for Ryan Day. And that is a huge stop on fourth down for the Buckeyes. So Ohio State will start from their own three yard line. First down. Quinshawn Judkins, the Ole Miss transfer, back-to-back thousand-yard -back seasons at Ole Miss last couple of years. They'll give it to him, and he is gobbled up immediately. Jay Sean Barham, the Maryland transfer at linebacker, with the tackle, no game. Uh, this is where, if you're Michigan, you got to shoot your shot. Wink Markendale, the defensive coordinator, be aggressive and thinking that. Put the pressure on Ohio State to try to throw the ball out of this situation. What you don't want to allow the Buckeyes to do is be able to just hand the football off to Quinshawn Judkins and get a first down. Force them to throw the ball from their own end zone. Second down and 10 at the three. And Howard this time running it straight up the gut. He'll gain one yard. And that will bring up third down and long for Ohio State. Mason Graham, the All-American, number 55, one of the Thank best the players ball. in the nation, a top 10 pick eventually with the tackle. Yeah, he's he's so good. You know, a Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant in there. That's the best interior in college football, but they're not just good against the run. They are terrific against the pass for their defensive coordinator, Wink Martindale. And right here in a, th in a passing situation, this is where they've got to get pressure is right up the middle in the face of Will Howard. Third down and nine at the four. Howard throwing out of his own end zone. And it's picked up down the sideline. Michigan has it inside the five. Hall with the pick. And the Wolverines force the first turnover of the game. Carnell Tate is on the outside, and he's working against Amir Hall, who is just sitting there. He's just playing tight coverage, sitting on that short route, and it feels very similar to that mistake Will Howard made early in the Penn State game when he threw a pick six. So you can see Hall just stayed in bounds after getting that pick. Tate a little slow out of his break. Hall sitting on the route, and now it's first down Michigan. Hall, a senior from Baltimore, Maryland, Richmond transfer. Michigan will have the football deep in Ohio State territory. Well, now it just feels like they got the fourth down, right? <laughs> yes. So we got a fourth down turned away, and now a turnover right back inside the five, and we're back in a goal-to-go situation for this defense and an offense that desperately needs to get in the end zone. And the Cardi boys will take their picture now. First and goal at the two. Power formation. Mullings, the deep man, they give it to him straight ahead. And he will not get in. He'll get inside the one. Cody Simon, Caden McDonald combining on the tackle. I tell you, we've done a lot of these Ohio State games, and these teams just continue to try to run at the middle of that defense. They've got six defensive linemen, down linemen in there in these goal line situations, and it is very difficult to score against them. Only 47% uh, touchdown percentage and goal to go defense. That's the best in college football. Second down and goal at the one. Power formation again. Mullings. Touchdown, Wolverines. Michigan capitalizing off the Will Howard interception to take a 6-3 lead on the road here in Columbus. When in doubt, get behind big number 44. Max Bredesen is just going to throw a great block on Jack Sawyer right there, and that gives just enough room for Mullings, who's able to power his way 
into the end zone for a touchdown. Zavada, extra point, good. Khalil Mullings. 12th touchdown of the season. The Wolverines pay it off to take in a 7-3 lead here in Columbus. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for nearly 160 years. In 2021, Jim Harbaugh got his first win as a coach versus Ohio State, finally getting over the hump. As a player, he had this to say about the rivalry. The last 10 games we've played mean nothing to us right now. It's down to a one-game season. Ohio State is our season. If we win this game, it's a successful season. If not, then it's not a successful season, period. Hole number four. Jerome Moore won this game last year. Subbing for Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh now with the Chargers. Seven and four season. Playing well. He booked the deep man. Let's it go over his head into the end zone. Pacific Life game summary is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for nearly 160 years. While this Michigan team has done exactly what they needed to do, which was limit the possessions, limit the snaps for Ohio State, drive down and execute in the red zone and get touchdowns. Khalil Mullins, 31 rush yards. Offense, 99 total yards, four first downs. Will Howard, that big interception on the last possession. But they've only held the ball, Gus, for five minutes and 42 seconds. So again, the blueprint for Michigan is exactly what they've needed. And again, I've touched on this on the offensive side. This team has evolved and gotten much better over the course of the year. They're playing their best football right now late in November. First down and 10 of the 25. Jutkins in the game at running back. Howard option. Jutkins with the lane. When Sean Jutkins out of bounds as he crosses the 40. There's that Chip Kelly pitch. Jukkins picking up 15. Yeah, nice option play right there off of that, that, that short side boundary edge. The edge defenders for Michigan are excellent players, whether it's TJ Guy, Cameron Brandt, Derek Moore, Josiah Stewart. And there, Chip Kelly putting him in conflict, the edge player, and allowing Will Howard to pitch it off. First down to the 40-yard line. Howard, play fake, steps up in the pocket on the move, delivers, and caught. Emeka Abuka with the reception, a gain of 18. Great route here by Emeka Abuka. First of all, on the other side, Jeremiah Smith clearing everything out so that there is a big hole for the senior wide receiver. And he's able to just float over to that area of the field and a nice completion for Will Howard. I will say this about Will Howard, Gus, and we've seen this now all year. This guy bounces back from mistakes as well as anybody that I've seen in college football. First down of the 42. Ibuka with seven catches, 80 yards last week against IU. Howard guns it up top, caught, and a nice reception by Jeremiah Smith as he's wrestled out of bounds on that Michigan sideline. That was Jair Halt Hill, excuse me, just a sophomore over there. And he actually tackled Smith way late, and now here we go. Flag on the play. And another flag. Smith and Hill had a good fight going on over there in bounds. And then after the play, a couple of steps out of bounds, Hill takes him down right at the feet of everybody over there. Watch this. He drags him down, and now he's right in the middle of that bench and trying to yank Jeremiah Smith off. You can see Smith, he's taking exception. There's a shove there. And then now you got the fireworks going on, and there's a couple of flags. One early in that whole sequence, and then one late. After the play, we have multiple unsportsmanlike conduct. Number one of Ohio State. This is his first that leads to his disqualification. Assistant coach in Michigan. Penalties offset. Second down. Feel good. 
field judge going down, Joel. Yeah, look at that. That is a, a scary scene over there. And he is up now. Everyone is up. So uh, an unsportsmanlike on an assistant coach. I couldn't see which one over there on the sideline for Michigan. And then Quinshawn Judkins, number one. And boy, I tell you what, you got it. It's heated. It's heated. It might be cold, Gus. But it's hot down there. You betcha. Second down and five at the 37. Howard gives it up. Judkins. And Judkins crosses the line of scrimmage. Hausman with the tackle. And he'll gain two. These backers for Michigan, Jay Sean Barham, Ernest Hausman, they've got to fly around and be great because those interior guys, those defensive tackles, you know, the entire focus of the offensive line is going to be on those guys. So the linebackers are largely going to be unblocked. Third down and three at the 35 for Ohio State. Howard looking for that first down. Oh, he gets crushed. Makari Page, number seven, and Ernest Hausman. Terrific tackles by the Wolverines. And Howard gets up slowly. They go with the zone read. Here's Howard. He reads the end. The end crashes down, and now he wants to physically get the line to gain. But McCory Page, my goodness. 6'4, 208. Giant hit. And Will Howard, the starting quarterback for Ohio State, is still on his back. The plot has thickened here in Columbus. I mean, that is just a, a huge hit from Makari Page. Totally legal. Led with the shoulder. Now it's fourth and one Buckeyes. Devin Brown comes in, the backup quarterback. He'll hand it off. Judkins gets the first down and more. Quinshawn Judkins gains 10 on fourth and one. How about this formation? This looks like a quarterback sneak all day long. It looks like everyone's just going to go there, but no, you're going to get Quinshawn Judkins around the edge of the left side of the offense. Great block by G. Scott right there, getting the edge number 88. And Judkins is able to get the line to gain and move the chains. And now here we go. New quarterback in the game. How about the pressure on Devin Brown? First down and 10 at the 23. And a timeout called by the Wolverines. Devin Brown has waited for his opportunity. And wow, it comes right now. How's going? Big Note Saturday is sponsored by Walmart Black Friday Deals. Welcome back. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, Gus, the latest now, Will Howard has just been given his helmet back. He is fired up. Now, let me tell you, the moment he left the field to the medical tent to back out, he was saying, I am fine, I'm good, pleading with the medical staff, telling them to hurry up, not concerned. They were obviously evaluating for a potential head injury, but he is fired up. He spoke with JT Tuimolo. Jack Sawyer said, I am not done with this game. I have more to go, and I'm ready to play. One thing about Will Howard, his enthusiasm, his leadership, second to none. First down and 10 of the 23. He's back in the game with Judkins. Howard gives it to Judkins, running right, and will be tackled for a loss. Behind the line of scrimmage, Josiah Stewart. With the tackle, the Coastal Carolina transfer having a sensational season. Yeah, he really is. And Josiah Stewart has come on, and he has been one of the better players in the Big Ten and the country. Eight and a half sacks, 13 tackles for loss coming into today. And his stock is certainly rising. And a guy that needed a big game today, in particular in passing situations like this one, might be here, Gus, on second and long. Second down and 11 after the one-yard loss. Howard looking. Howard with time decides to run it. And he'll get down inside the 20. Ernest Hausman, Kenneth Grant, defensively, a flag on the play. Offside. Defense number zero. Right at the Second out. 
That's Josiah Stewart. Near side, there's Stewart. You can see he's just lined up in the neutral zone, just never got a, a clear look of where he was actually lined up. I'll keep coming back to this. I know that they're trying to run the football here and get a little bit of an attitude, but their advantage is on the outside, throwing the football. And Will Howard had that pick. He needs to come back, throw the ball well. They've got advantages out there and one-on-ones to exploit. Second and six. They're running around the corner. No room and again. Quinshawn Judkins. This is Michigan defense. Forces a one-yard loss. Great pursuit. Hausman leading the way. Yeah, and you really have to spread this defense out. You know, when you leave them condensed, in particular, like one side there for Wink Martindale, they had wide receivers to the top end of the formation, and nobody split out to the bottom side of the formation. And then the Michigan defense can stay condensed. That's where Ohio State tried to run. You can't do that. Michigan's too physical. You've got to spread them out in order to run the football and exploit those matchups on the outside. You've got a one-on-one -on -one up here with Jeremiah Smith. Third down and seven at the 20. Howard looking incomplete and that'll bring up fourth down and seven. Carnell Tate the intended receiver as Howard walks off the field. Boy I tell you they're gonna want this one back that entire sequence they ran the football into the strength of the defense didn't get any yardage come back on third down you've got a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Jeremiah Smith and they did not throw it out to the wide side. Ohio State and Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator, has got to try to get the ball on the perimeter of this defense. Jaden Fielding, one for one last week against Indiana, a 45-yarder. He's kicked a 29-yarder already, and this one, a 38-yarder, wide right. Ohio State comes up empty. 7.28 to go, second quarter. Michigan holding on to the lead. Up seven to three. All right here on Fox. First down and ten for Michigan at their own 20. Wolverines with a seven to three lead. Hillel Mullings, the pistol back. They'll give it to him straight ahead. Stutter step gets through the hole. And Mullings gains three yards on the play. Arvell Reese first man to him. What we've seen from Ohio State in previous weeks is that Jim Knowles, their defensive coordinator, is willing to adjust mid-game. And we saw that last week against Indiana, and all of a sudden they started blitzing a lot more after that first series. I wonder if they're going to start playing these safeties a lot closer to the line of scrimmage, rely on their one-on-one -on -one coverage outside against this depleted wide receiver core, and see if they can get a stop to this run game. See how low these safeties are playing now. Second down and seven at the 23. Mullings again. Reese again with the tackle, gain of two. And now what they've really focused on, and Gus, you touched on this earlier today, is this idea of getting pressure. And on third down, that's exactly what they need, and more creative pressure than in years past. Rather than relying on their down front four defensive linemen in order to get pressure on the quarterback, trying to blitz and stunt and create movement up front and confusion in order to get a free rusher in the face of Davis Warren. Third down and five for the Wolverines. Ohio State. Underneath, incomplete, and Ohio State will get the ball back. Tyler Morris, the target. That went in and out of his hands in front of Igbenosu. And boy, and Morris is going to want that one back, and Morris too, because it's there. They're going to get the first down if this ball is just a touch lower, and Morris certainly needs to hold on. There's number eight. He's right there. He's open. It's going to be a first down right through his hands, and Michigan is going to have to punt it away. Tommy Doman standing at the 11. Caleb Downs a deep man. He's dangerous. Line drive, end over a kick. Over the head of Downs. And it will roll inside the Ohio State 10. A 68-yard punt 
And for Ohio State, couple miscues already. Backed up, shadow on their own goalposts, and there's Will Howard with a pick. It's set up Michigan first and goal inside the five. They're able to punch it in, and then on the last series, they drive up the field, and it's a missed field goal to the right. And Ryan Day and this Buckeyes team, they've been able to move the ball decently. They've gained almost 100 yards, almost four and a half per play, but they have not been able to convert those series. And what's been working so far, Gus, is when they spread out Michigan and use the perimeter passing game. They've gone up and down the field. And then when they try to get tight and run the ball, that's exactly where Michigan is strong. First down and 10 at the seven. Michigan flips the field. Ohio State. It's got to go a long way here with 5.41 to go in the second. Travion Henderson in the game at running back. They'll give it to him. Henderson tried to break it back, runs into a number of white jerseys. Will gain two yards on the play. Mason Graham, tip of the spear for the Wolverines. Go back a couple of elite teams that this Michigan team has faced. Oregon earlier this year, Texas game, a Gus uh, game that we called. And what those two teams did is that they really attacked Michigan on the outside, in particular early in the game, and it softened them up to run the ball. Ohio State hasn't done that. And here again, a condensed set. Look at all these Michigan players at or near the line of scrimmage. Second down and eight. Howard. Hit as he throws incomplete. That type of set is playing into Michigan's hands. And you see, again, pressure on Howard. They can play that tight zone coverage. There's nowhere to go with the ball. Mike McDonald, Jesse Minton, the two defensive coordinators for Michigan over the last few years, they learned from Wink Markdale, the current defensive coordinator, for Michigan, and he's a master of the quarterback blitz. He is, in particular, on these third downs, and we'll see what type of creative pressure they try to bring here on Will Howard. Third down and eight at the nine. Howard hands it off. Nowhere to go. Another tackle for a loss, and the fans don't like it. Wow. Jaden Hood with the tackle for the Wolverines. And Ohio State will have to punt it away deep in their own territory. I just, I, I tell you what, in a game like this, you know, if you're Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator, you have got to get the ball to your best players. And Emeka Abuka and Jeremiah Smith, they've only got four total targets so far on the day. Joe McGuire punting eight yards deep in his own end zone. Tyler Morris is the deep man at midfield. Morris comes up. Not a very good punt, and he'll have it at the 39-yard line. Only a 31-yard punt for McGuire, and Michigan will play with the short field with 4.17 to go in the second. All right, let's take a look at the history of today's competition. Sponsored by Peloton, the only time she a ranked be. Ohio State team lost to an unranked Michigan team at home. She in watch the game. And Should be banned now. It was cold. The temperature was 10 degrees, and the snow was falling at a rate of two inches an hour. Michigan won it nine to three. Not snowing today, but it is cold. First and ten at the 39. Edwards picks his way forward. Gains three. This this offense has just looked so different over the last couple of weeks. And again, they've leaned into where they're strong. And Kirk Campbell, the offensive coordinator, kind of learning this offense along the way. And listen, he, he even admitted to us, Gus, on, on our conversation this week. He's like, it took me a while to learn this team. And, and we had to figure out that, hey, we probably can't just lean on the run game every single week in order to get ourselves going. We've got to be creative with our sets, with our motions. <laughs> And it's not looking Lakeland. good. Second down and seven at the 36 for Davis Warren, the walk on quarterback leading the way. Edwards, nothing. Nicely done. Tyleek Williams, Caden McDonald combining on the tackle. Well, now you've got a third down opportunity if you're Ohio State to try to get off the field, but if you're Sharon Moore. Zvada's got the leg and he's with the wind, so he feels like he would probably attempt a field goal. But if he gets within two or three yards, there's a chance Sharon Moore might go for it on fourth down here. 
Third down and eight at the 37. Edwards in motion. They'll give it to him. Running right, turns the corner. And Edwards gets chopped down right at the line of scrimmage. Caleb Downs again. Watch Downs all the way from his safety position, and he's just so fast when he reacts up near the line of scrimmage in order to make tackles in the run game. He reminds me so much of Troy Polamalu in that regard. He's just flying up. Great anticipation in the run game. He's a terrific tackler. That's why he's one of the best defenders in the country. So Michigan faced with the fourth and seven decision to make here. And it looks like they are bringing on their field goal kicker. And this kid has been wonderful this season. Dominic Zavada, Arkansas State transfer. Last week, two of two with a long of 56 yards. He's a school record six for six from 50 plus yards this year. Uh, he's been remarkable and have no idea why he is not a finalist for the Groza Award, although these, these awards this year have been Kind of interesting as far as finalists. Now on the far side, there is a Michigan player down. That's Donovan Edwards. Yeah, we believe it's Donovan Edwards who got that last carry on third down. And he is still down. He has been so good in big games for this Michigan team over the last couple of years. Gus, who can forget the Don two years ago and what he did late in this matchup against the Buckeyes. And you can see as he's rolled up late in this play four Buckeyes on him as he hit the turf so Zavada into attempt a 54 yarder had a 56 yarder last week against Northwestern got it away Zavada again wow the NFL scouts must be salivating over this young man. Another 50-plus yard field goal, and Michigan takes a 10-3 lead with 2.15 remaining in the first half. And they have just done exactly what they have needed to do so far here today in the game. And, and Gus, when you think about a Michigan blueprint for success, you think about what they were able to do a year ago to go 15 and 0 and win a national championship. What was it? It was time of possession. It was field position. It was being able to win the line of scrimmage. They've done all of those things here today. You know, you look up and a punt goes inside the 10 and Ohio State's backed up and then they get a short field and they're able to turn it into points. Michigan's doing exactly what they need to do to not only pull the upset, but beat Ohio State. And this is the way the program has been built, whether it's Jim Harbaugh or Sharon Moore. They built this program with this game in mind, the philosophy that they use. It just so happens it took them a while to get going this year, but they certainly are playing their best football now. I talked to Jerome Moore on the phone earlier this week on Monday. He said after that Northwestern game, he said we found something. Both offensively, defensively, and in special teams. Now let's go to Rob Stone. Hey, Gus, coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Tennessee officially on upset alert at Nashville, plus a huge game with playoff implications from the Palmetto State, Clemson, and South Carolina, plus the guys will join me to talk about how Michigan has overcome the odds to have the lead late here in the first half. All right, Sona, thank you very much. 10-3, to 2.15 to go, second quarter. Number two team in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes, in a fight. And you said it at the beginning of this game, partner, throw the records out of the window. Doesn't matter, first and 10 of the 25. Howard under pressure, lost it up in the air. Deflected and incomplete. Another well-defended play, this time Zeke Berry got a hand on it. Remember, Michigan's playing without one of the best corners in America in Will Johnson. That's right, and on this one, there's so much pressure. You can tell Will Howard just throws it to four right away, but look at the triple coverage, and that's something that Wink Martindale said, is that we are not going to allow Jeremiah Smith to just run down the field in single coverage, and there's the double and triple team right there. Second and ten of the 25.
Howard. Near side, caught, and out of bounds. That's G. Scott, the tight end, who gained six. Ohio State with three timeouts remaining, and we hit the two-minute timeout. Ten to three. Back after this. Michigan, Ohio State, one of the great rivalries in all of sports. And it's safe to say these guys don't like each other. This game is a war. Anytime there's a war, there's consequences and casualties. Then there's the plunder and the rewards that come with it. That's what it is. Ryan Day, one and three versus the Wolverines. Third down and four at the 31 for the Buckeyes. Howard over the middle, the ball. caught Abuka, money, and he gets to midfield. A Mecca Abuka gain of 18. Hillman with the tackle. Finally, a little protection there for Howard. He's able to get the ball over the middle to Abuka. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Not a good snap. Howard just throws this one out of bounds. Let's hit the. And Carson Hensman has had problems, the starting center, with snapping that ball in the shotgun. It's almost as if he thought Howard was under center. Watch, he kind of just snaps it up to his own butt, which is where the quarterback's hands would be if he was under center. It's like he forgot that they were in shotgun. Hensman did have problems in that Cotton Bowl late last year. They brought in Seth McLaughlin. Seth McLaughlin was playing at an All-American level, the transfer from Alabama. He tears his Achilles before last week's game, and Hensman is back in the lineup. Second and ten at the 49. Will Howard over the middle. Caught close to first down. Jeremiah Smith again. Donovan Edwards, the Michigan running back on the sideline. Jersey off. Third down and short. Underneath first down Ohio State. Carnell Tate. You see how different this passing game looks when they're spread out like this. Spreading out this defense is where you can find the advantage. First down, Howard, quick tempo now for Ohio State. Tate again. Carnell Tate, what a wonderful story. This young man lost his mother prior to his freshman year. She was murdered in a drive-by shooting in Chicago, but he continues to thrive. Howard. Hands it off, Henderson. A gain of two. Well, you can see on this series and, and plenty more before it how much better this Ohio State offense is when they're operating in space as the clock is ticking now under 45 seconds. Look how wide the splits are from the wide receiver. Second down and eight. Howard pump fake goes up top. Incomplete and pass interference coming up. Jeremiah Smith. Jair Hill with the penalty. Get the first down. Well, this ball is severely inside, and so that's why Smith is trying to get back and adjust his route towards the inside of the field. And Hill just basically holds him there and doesn't allow him to come back to that football. And that is a huge penalty. And Smith, who's been battling out there with Hill, now has already drawn two PIs from Jair Hill so far on the day. That's a tough matchup, man. I'll tell you what. Jeremiah Smith is so strong. I know he's a young guy. He's 6'3", 215 pounds. But if you're one-on-one -on -one with him down the field, I, I don't know how else to defend him because he's so good and strong. First down for Ohio State with a chance to level this game if they can score. Howard in the end zone. Touchdown. Money on the rise. Jeremiah Smith. Chip Kelly starting to open things up now. They've marched down the field a few times throwing the ball. 
And here, because of the situation inside of two minutes, they're forced to spread it out, throw the ball down the field, and that's where their advantage lies. And they finally get into the end zone with 30 seconds left in this first half. Ohio State has not played their best half of football. However, this game is tied. Ten up. Jeremiah Smith turned 19 years old yesterday. Watch this physical release at the second level against Zeke Berry. He's going to get away with that contact right there, similar to the Oregon game. That one drew an offensive pass interference, but watch on this one as he doesn't extend the arms. Yes, there's contact, but he doesn't push off in order to gain the advantage. He gets the space because of that physicality. He so just ran him over, He Joel. ran him over, and he's to the corner, and it's an easy touchdown for Ohio State. Nine plays covering 75 yards. Buckeye score in a minute and 45 seconds. And you see, Gus, what I'm talking about, about the space. That's where their advantage is, whether it's Carnell Tate, Emeka Abuka, Jeremiah Smith. This is a depleted secondary, and you've got to get the ball away from that defensive line. They've done that for the bulk of the game, but you've got to finish the series out there on the perimeter as well, and they're finally able to do that here inside of a minute. And Chip Kelly will probably say to you, Parker, I'm softening the butt. <laughs> he well, I know Chip enough to know he would have some answer for him. There's, <laughs> no he would. There's no doubt. Ten up. 30 seconds to go. Here in the first half. Not only is it cold, folks, it's windy. They'll be kicking this right into the wind. There's a good chance that this Michigan return unit and that is Jordan Marshall back there returning kicks. He's likely to catch this about the 10 yard line and maybe shorter because the wind is blowing right to left on your screen. We've seen a couple of punts going this direction that have been held up by that wind. A chance for a good return here if you're Michigan. Jaden Fielding kicking it away. This one short, picked up, 25-yard line, and Michigan. Joe Taylor with the tackle on special teams. And tomorrow on Fox, two of the NFC's best go head-to-head -head as Kyler Murray. And the Cardinals take on Justin Jefferson and the Vikings or the Bucks battle the Panthers for other regional action. Check local listings for the game in your area only on Fox. First down and 10 of the 28. Michigan staying on the ground with Mullings. They'll try to run this half out. Jerome Moore, his team became bowl eligible last week with their win against Northwestern. He'll head into the locker room. Game tied up to 10 apiece. Moore will take it. Ryan Day, he knows his team didn't play their best football. But he's got a tie game, and he's great at halftime adjustments. Michigan, Ohio State tied at 10 for the first time since 2017. Don't forget, after the break, Rob and the boys with the halftime show right here at Ohio Stadium. Thank you very much. We are ready for the second half here in the game as we look at the first half stats. You can see those total yards. Ohio State finally on that last drive getting things going in those 11 first downs. Michigan. You know, it's not like they're moving the ball, but again, they you've used that philosophy, that game plan, time possession, field position, and getting themselves a couple of scores. But I thought what was very apparent, and the guys touched on this, I touched on it in the first half, is just the mismatch on the outside. And now with the Buckeye offense coming on the field, you just wonder if they'll stay wide and start throwing it to those wide receivers more often. And Gus, here in the third quarter, they will be going with the wind. So it'll be a lot easier for Will Howard to throw the football. 
Ohio State ready to receive. 10-10. As we start the second half from Columbus. Travion Anderson, the deep man. And he'll start from his own goal line and get to the five, maybe the six yard line. And that'll bring up Will Howard. Will Howard took a hard hit in that first half. They took his helmet from him momentarily, but he shook it off and came back on the field to lead him on that big scoring drive at the end of the first half. And that's where bulk of their yards came from. First four drives, 81 yards. Last drive, 75 yards. And again, you know, this, this Buckeye team, I know they want to run the football. They, they want to prove that they can win the line of scrimmage, but their advantage is so significant out wide with the talented wide receivers, and we'll see if they lean into that here. First down and 10 at the six. Judkins, the running back in the end zone. They'll give it to him straight ahead. Not a lot. Two, maybe three on the play. Mason Graham defensively for Michigan. And this Michigan defense, they did a nice job stifling that run game. And they've got to continue to do that. The, the other thing that they've got to do, Gus, is I think they got to take some chances on the outside. I believe Ohio State's going to lean into the quick passing game on the perimeter. We've already seen Amir Hall with a pick today. I think these corners have got to get nosy, sit on some of these short routes, and try to get a cheap interception. Second down and eight at the seven. Henderson. A yard, maybe two. This Michigan defense playing extremely well against the run. Remember, Ohio State, they've had a lot of shuffling on that offensive line. Yeah, due to injuries, you know, Simmons went down, he was the starting left tackle. Then Seth McLaughlin went down, he was the starting center. So now you've got Carson Hinsman at center, Austin Zerbel at left guard, and we haven't even really mentioned Donovan Jackson, 74, playing an unnatural position out at tackle. He's normally a guard, but he's done it fairly well. Third down and five at the 10. Howard surveying over the middle, first down Ohio State. Howard so cool and calm in the pocket. Abuka found a crease and he gains nine. The biggest question for this offensive line, Gus, that you just discussed, I don't think it's going to be the run game in the second half. It's going to be pass protection. And here the protection is brilliant. Howard has time to survey, get the ball to Abuka, and it's a first down. From the 19. G. Scott in motion. Howard throwing off first down. Underneath again, and another first down. Carnell Tate. And we talked to you about Carnell Tate. And for those of you that haven't had a chance to watch Ohio State this year, we told you about Tate earlier in the first half and the story about his mom, but he's persevered. This kid is really a true champion. He has a 3.7 grade point average as a sophomore in the sports industry major here at Ohio State after losing his mom his freshman year. 3.7. He said he's getting ready to declare his minor which will be finance so sports industry finance equals he's probably going to be an owner of an nfl team after his nfl career is over as a player this kid is a champion carnell tate what's the nickname for a home run joel in baseball I, i've missed this last week but it's a tater that's what he says his family calls him tater because this kid is a home run first down and 10 at the 32. Howard. Straight ahead. He'll gain three. Ernest Hausman with the tackle. You know, it, think about the advantage that Ohio State has. Carnell Tate's going to play in the NFL. There's, there's no doubt. And he's their third option. And another hit on... Will Howard there, remember, he, he got checked for a potential head injury in the first half. He was cleared both in a physical inspection under the tent and the video evidence. He's back on the field, but taking another hit there. Second down and seven. That ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. A Michigan defender got a hand on it. Rayshon Benny 
got his paw on the football. And this defensive line, listen, it's not just about stopping the run. They're going to have to be terrific when it comes to rushing the passer and then doing that, getting the pass break up. Kenneth Grant, 78, he's been a PBU machine in his career. And right there, getting a nice job on the interior as Rayshon Benny gets his hands on the football. Second down and seven. Make that third down and seven. At the 35. Michigan trying to get off the field here. Howard. Under pressure, screen pass, first down and more for the Buckeyes. What a run, what a play. Travion Henderson gains 23. Barham with the tackle. He's just going to leak through the protection. Watch Henderson as he just gets through the protection right here. And then he's able to just get out outside on the left side. And there's nobody there. Good block down the field. How about that? The youngster Brandon Ennis, the sophomore number 11, with a big block down the field for Henderson. And now they're across the 50. First down, Henderson, the single setback. Play fake. Howard sets up. Looks. Goes through his progression. Sideline throw incomplete. Well defended by the Wolverines. Jeremiah Smith, the target. Zeke Berry in the vicinity. They're trying to take a shot, a big play action fake. They were trying to get that ball to Emeka Abuka right down the middle of the field. And the coverage was just excellent. Safety stayed home. And then on that outside, you got to give Zeke Berry a lot of credit, don't you, Gus? Because listen, he's playing out of position number 10. And Will Howard, one of the best corners in America, he gets hurt. So Zeke Berry, the normal nickel inside corner, goes outside. And, and listen, he's played pretty well this year. Second down and 10 at the 41. Howard sprinting out of the pocket, looks backside, throws the screen. Smith turns it up, and he'll just cross the line of scrimmage and get two. And Josiah Stewart there to push him out of play. Well, and this is when that pass protection is going to be so important. You know, and, and Michigan and Wink Martindale, they're going to try to dial something up to present some pressure on Will Howard so that he doesn't have the time to pick apart this secondary. Third down and seven. Ball at the 38. Howard over the middle incomplete Abuka was open that ball thrown behind him and that brings up fourth down how about the pressure from Kenneth Grant watch the big nose tackle 78 and he gets right in the face of Howard you can tell Howard throws that late he throws that behind Abuka and they're lucky that that ball was not picked off normally tips and overthrows find their way into the hands of the defender and Wesley Walker the transfer from Tennessee just cannot corral it Joe McGuire comes in to punt from his own 47 yard line Tyler Morris the deep man inside the 10 this one just popped in the air Morris lets it go over his head and it's down inside the five Ballard right there 36 yard punt nicely done by McGuire but coming up Michigan on offense after this This is the 103rd year of Ohio State football. 10-10. Our score, Michigan, deep in their own territory. First down and 10 at the two. Mullins, their power back, lines up with Warren. They give it to him straight ahead, looking for some running room. And they won't get much. Maybe two. They're scoring plays and drives, I should say. Only six plays, five yards, ten punts. Remember, they got the first and goal inside the five. They scored a touchdown. And then the short punt, which gave them the ball inside the 40-yard line, gained a few yards, kicked a long field goal. So this Michigan offense, their first couple of series, they were able to move the ball, Gus, but they have not done much since then. And here, backed up inside their own five, this is not a good situation for Michigan. Second down and eight at the four. Mullings the pistol back. They give it to him again. Not much. This Ohio State defense stout. 
in the middle. Two-yard gain, Reese. We've called his name a number of times today. And that brings up third down and six. And what an opportunity here to get great field position. Remember, the wind is blowing pretty significantly from the right to the left on your television screen, which means if Ohio State can get a good stop right here on this down, they're likely to get the ball around the 40, maybe the 45-yard line, plus side of the 50 for their offense, which has found a rhythm there late in that first half. Davis Warren is going to have to let the ball fly. Warren to throw it. Warren dancing. Warren over the middle. Incomplete. That one actually to the sideline intended for Hogan Hansen. And the Wolverines will have to punt it away. And I tell you, Warren missed him. He's wide open. Watch Hansen as Hansen is going to get down the sideline, and he is left. He is lost in coverage, and Hansen is wide open, and Warren missed him. Oh, my goodness, that would have been a giant play for Michigan, not only from a field position perspective, but giving them a huge gain. Tommy Doman will punt it from the back of his own end zone. Caleb Downs, the dangerous one, at his at the 45, rather, of Michigan. And it's fair caught in that area. A 40-yard punt, great field position. Coming up for the Buckeyes, game tied at 10 of the senior Buckeyes. I'd be lying if I told you it didn't burn a fire inside of us. We know what's at stake when we play those guys. All of our goals and aspirations for the season ride on that game in November. They hate us. We hate them. That's the way it's got to be. Big Jack Sawyer. Ohio State with their best starting field position today at the Michigan 47-yard line. Game tied at 10. Jutkins, the Ole Miss transfer in the backfield. They give it to him, running left. Quinchon Jutkins, what a run. Bursting through the hole. Picking up a first down. Gaining 17, Quinton Johnson with the tackle. Look at the creative block here. They're going to send the guard and tackle up the field, the center up the field, and then trap the interior tackle with the tight end. That's Kesmeric 89, and it's a nice little creative way to get up to the second level on a quality run. Jutkins, eight carries, 43 yards. First and 10 at the Michigan 30. They give it to him again. He'll gain three. Stopped on the play by Barham. Boy, you just feel like, you know, in a 10-10 game where the Ohio State defense has really taken control of the game, Gus, that this series is big, and, and you wonder how aggressive Ryan Day will be. You know, we've seen him over the course of this season be very aggressive on fourth downs, and this might be a series where he's telling Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator, hey, you got four downs to get these first, and we're going to go and punch it in the end zone. Second and seven at the 27. Judkins. Two yard gain. Kenneth Grant in on the play for the Wolverines defensively. A yeah, big play there from big hit really from Wesley Walker. He's the one that made the tackle. And Judkins will come out and now Travion Henderson who comes in a lot on third down. He's been tremendous blocking and pass protection as well as on that last series catching that ball out of the backfield. Third and five at the 25. Will Howard. Off his back foot, near side, caught. And a first down for Ohio State. Abuka again. What a great clear out route by Smith. And that allows Abuka to break out to the outside. See, Smith clears out the zone. Now, Abuka's got a little bit of space, and that's a really accurate ball by Will Howard there on the outside. And he lunges forward for that first down. Six-yard reception. First down of the Michigan 19 for the Buckeyes. Yeah, this Michigan defense, they desperately need to hold Ohio State to a field goal on this drive. That would be a huge win. Howard with the handoff, another good run for Ohio State this time. It's Travion Henderson. 
and he picks up six. And they're starting to pull these linemen around, and that's why they're able to create some of these creases. When they're just blocking straight ahead in these zone schemes, they don't do very well. But the offensive line now pulling, using that athleticism, finding some space now in this run game. Second and four at the 14. Judkins ambush behind the line of scrimmage drop for a loss TJ guy number 42 the junior from Brockton mass with the tackle loss of two so this is what I'm talking about Gus now it's just going to be zone blocking you're not going to pull an offensive lineman but look at the stout play of the defensive front so that's where those schematics in the run game have to play into what Chip Colley is telling they're they're creasing them on those gaps games and they can't run the zone play Third and seven at the 16. Howard goes through his progressions underneath. Oh, almost intercepted. And it is intercepted. Makari Page. Will Howard throws his second pick. That one costly. Deep in Michigan territory. What a play from Page. He read it beautifully. Ball is behind Abuka. Wink Martindale in that defense holds again. Makari Page, the veteran. The or Colorado State for the Mountain West Championship. Coverage begins Friday at 7 Eastern time on Fox. And they run it straight ahead with Mullings right into the hands of Cody Simon, a three yard gain for Michigan, but Will Howard, another costly interception deep in Michigan territory. Yeah, and, and both of those, you know, the first one gave Michigan a touchdown. That one, you're going in to score. You feel like you've definitely got points in a field goal opportunity, and, and both were really poor throws from Will Howard. Second and seven at the 12. Warren. Bounces out of the pocket. Incomplete. Samaj Morgan, the target. Ohio State bringing some pressure up the middle. And this defense is feeling it. Listen, they've got the advantage everywhere. They've got great corners on the outside. Terrific safety play. Their defensive line has played very well. And now it's about getting that pressure on the quarterback. Tight coverage on the outside. Don't let Davis Warren throw an easy pitch and catch on the outside and try to let this rush, this blitz, get to the quarterback. Third down and seven at the 12-yard line. Warren under pressure and he throws an interception. Caleb Downs scooped that one off the ground like Derek Jeter. And Ohio State is in business. Well, partner, he's wearing the right number for Derek Jeter, ain't he? How about that right off the top of his shoes? This ball thrown severely behind the intended target. And watch Downs as he kind of backs out of this blitz. And now he's just sitting there in zone defense. And look, and he goes down that right shin. And he's able to corral that ball in. A finalist for the Thorpe Award as the best defensive back in college football. And you can see why. He's great in the run game. He's terrific against the pass. And Ryan Day has a short field for his offense here right outside of the 15-yard line. First down and 10 at the Michigan 16 for the Buckeyes. Junkins in the backfield. They'll give it to him. Q. And they grab him as he hits the line of scrimmage. Fans not happy with the play selection. Yeah, I mean, no gain. Kenneth Grant defensively for the Wolverines. Gus, they've got a point. And, you know, the guys at halftime, I've been talking about it all day long. It's a mismatch in the interior with this O-line against Michigan's defensive line. And running it straight ahead at them has not been working. Now, you can trap and try to gap scheme them in the run game. But their advantage is outside. You've got to get the ball on the perimeter to some of these wide receivers. Second down and 10 at the 16. Howard's running out of the pocket. Looks back side. Has his receiver, but nothing. G. Scott, the tight end, crosses the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Hall with the tackle. 
for the Wolverines. And Michigan is so sound in terms of their discipline. They're trying to run this little throw back to the tight end who's going to go back to the left side of the formation. But see the discipline of that defense? They are, they are ready for it. Third down and 10 of the 16. Howard, delayed handoff. Henderson, and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Wow. Mason Graham. That is a really poor sequence from Ohio State. And thank you very much, Mason Graham. How about Mason Graham? This is why he's one of the best in America. Look at him just swim by the guard, Thagala, and he's in the backfield. He's so quick and so powerful. A run, a throwback to the tight end, and a delay after that field position? Holy cow. Jaden Fielding, who missed his last field goal attempt from 38 yards, this one from 34 yards away. And he hooked it. No good. Wow. Both of these teams self-inflicted wounds. And the score remains 10-10. Fielding missing his second field goal back to backs, chip shots. Wolverines will get it again. We're level. Head up. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by American Express. Shop on Small Business Saturday, founded by American Express. 158 to play in the third quarter. This game is tied at 10 apiece. I tell you what, there have been some self-inflicted wounds for both teams in this game. Yeah, both both quarterbacks, a couple of picks here in this second half, and, and both offenses just cannot get anything going against these terrific defenses. First down at the 20. Warren sprints out. On the move, incomplete. Now Michigan, Gus, only has 31 yards passing today, and they have an INT. You know, you think about up here, you're like, I'm, I'm wondering to myself, all right, if, if I'm the offensive coordinator, what am I doing here? What am I trying to get in? And honestly, the answer is some sort of specialty play, you know, some sort of throwback, some sort of double pass, something to spark this offense, because for the last four or five series, they have just gone nowhere. Second down and 10 of the 20. The handoff, Mullings. We'll push the pile forward, get close to the 25, a gain of four. You know, and because of that, I think if you're Ohio State and Jim Knowles, what you don't want to do is create a big play for Michigan. So I don't think that there's any reason for them to, to run a risky defense from a blitz perspective and leave somebody wide open or the ability for Michigan to go the distance. So you keep safeties back and you force this offense, which has struggled, to earn their way down the field. And there you see safety deep in the middle of the field. Michigan, no first downs in their last six drives. Third and six. Warren, underneath, caught, and a first down. Michigan finally getting something going, and that's Klein with the reception. Remember, no Colston Loveland today for the Wolverines. One of the best players in America. Well, not, not only that, but he's really their whole passing game. Remember I told you earlier, he's got 50 more targets than any other offensive skill position player for the Michigan Wolverines. Their offense runs through Colston Loveland, and they're his backup. Marlon Klein is able to get a big catch for a first down. Alex Orgy comes in at quarterback now for Michigan from the 31. He runs it straight ahead. Orgy with a big run in the first half. Caleb Downs with the tackle. And that should take us to the end of the third quarter. Wow. Well, how about these defenses, partner? showing up in the third quarter end of the third quarter 10 up folks it's anybody's game michigan ohio state the game one quarter left
Big noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Reliability for your business is our business. Welcome back to the shoe. Start of the fourth Did I miss quarter. anything? 10-10. Still 10-10. Ohio right. State, the number two team in the nation against their arch rivals, the Michigan Wolverines, the defending national champions. Both offenses ugly through three. Game no. Fielding, the field goal kicker for Ohio State. Fielding with his first game with multiple misses in his career. He came into this game 14 for 14, under 40 yards in his career, and he's missed two inside of 40 yards. A 30 quarter and a 38er. Second down and eight at the 33. Gus, it was the first play of the fourth quarter a year ago when they threw a halfback pass, Michigan did. And with the way the offense has looked, there is some sort of trick play or specialty play coming at some point here in this next few snaps or the next few series of downs. Donovan Edwards, great with that trick pass, but he's not in the game right now because of injury. Second down and eight at the 33. Mullings, the running back. Make some field goals. We'd be up about they six points. Him, bounces it outside. Mullings lowers his shoulder and pushes the pile forward. Sonny Styles there to stand him up. And he'll gain about two. And the question for Michigan becomes, who do you target on third down? Ryan Day knows it on the opposite side. Who's the target? Hogan Hansen, the true freshman. They say they love him. Number 80. He's going to be the tight end to the top of your screen. Third and six at the 35 yard line. Warren. Near side throw caught first down. Nicely done. And that's Klein. Boy, and cushion there from Ohio State. I believe that was Lathan Ransom out in coverage, the tight, uh, tight end against the safety. And look at all that space on a third and six allows him to just get to the line to gain and turn around. And Warren was quick with that ball, and he's able to just turn and get that first down. Warren on the day. Eight of 14, 44 yards with an interception. First down at the 41. Mullins. What they say about Big Ten football in the old days? Four yards of the cloud of dust. That's what that's that's, we're seeing today, folks. That is absolutely the case. And, and Mullings has been a bit of a workhorse here. And it's just been physical, tough sledding for Mullings. 19 carries, 57 yards, only three a pop. But remember, folks, Michigan has a dynamite field goal kicker if they can get close. nobody can do and anything the going in this direction minutes. here in the so going going to second and nine of the 42 orgy back in the game quarterback he'll run it and orgy a half yard maybe it benosin defensively clock keeps winding down this favors the wolverines Third down, eight yards to go at the 43. Can Davis Warren, the quarterback for Michigan, make a play when they need it? Warren rolls out. Warren throws on the move. And it's a catch. Peyton O'Leary. A 18-yard gain. Davis Warren makes the throw. Oh, how about this from the former walk-on? You talk about a guy who has faced adversity in his life. Oh, what a catch. Staring it in the face. And how about that catch from O'Leary? He keeps it off the turf. And it looked like he kept himself in bounds as he secured that ball for a first down. Oh, I love the look of Davis Warren's eyes. Did you see the calm on his face as he's rolling over to his right? My goodness, what a catch there from Peyton O'Leary, the senior. 
He was originally a lacrosse player, Gus. Coming out of high school, he committed to UMass as a lacrosse player. And here he is making a giant catch in the game in the fourth quarter. Remember, Ohio State comes into this game 23. After review, the ruling of a catch is confirmed. First down. So the catch will stand. Ohio State 23 and a half point favorites. The largest spread in this series since 1978. Yeah, I they are right on the edge of field goal range. Right on the edge. Zvada has made a career long of 56. That's about where they're at right now. So and he hit a 54 yarder earlier. And, and so Gus, if you're the quarterback, if you're Davis Warren, no negative plays. You cannot give up any yardage. First down of the 39. Here's a handoff. Mullins tries to stretch it. Ohio State won't have it. No gain. Ransom comes up and makes a stop. These safeties are just so active in the run game and making it so difficult on Michigan to try to sustain anything on the ground. And it's coming down to these. It's like every set of downs. It's third and six, third and six, third and six. So these safeties doing their job in that run defense early. Second down and 10. 11 minutes to play. 10 up. Lauren, the throw. Steps up. He'll run it with Green Grove Davis Warren. What a play. That's a huge one. A gain of 11, and they're in field goal range for Zabata. You're going to get a crossing route right here, and I'm going to watch this linebacker. I believe that's Sonny Styles, and he vacates the zone. So what does that allow Davis Warren to just rise up in the pocket and take off? He saw that green grass. Great look from the ump cam right there, and he's able to get the line to gain. It's a first down for Michigan. Plus a inside the 30, plays. now definitely inside field goal range for Zabata. Davis Warren, a cancer survivor. He underwent chemo and spent most of the summer of 2019 in the hospital. First down at the 28. Here's the reverse, and they throw it! Incomplete, but a flag. Denzel Burke will be called for the flag. Bell throwing the football. Passer defeat. Defense, number 10, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. That's Ohio State's first penalty of the game. Well, and here comes Bell. They're going to flip it to him right there from Alex Orgy, and Bell was a high school quarterback. He actually set a completion percentage record for his high school, Ronnie Bell's brother in Kansas City, Missouri, and he throws that one just short. Burke interferes, and it's another first down. Parker, you said it was coming. You said some kind of trick play was coming. First down and 10 of the 13 for the Wolverines. Can they pay it off? Mullings dragging defenders. Gains four. Caleb Downs with the tackle. Now Michigan in no hurry. You know, Gus, they might need another one. Because remember, we, we've already talked about how stout this Ohio State defense is inside of their own red zone. They are the best defense in America in these situations. Michigan might need something creative again to try to get this ball into the end zone. Does Sharon Moore have another trick up his sleeve? 13th play of the drive. Mullings with room. And Kalel Mullings. Stopped by Jack Sawyer. Gains five yards. Third down and one at the four yard line. Boy, this offensive line has come to life here late. Boy, this is very similar to three years ago in 2021 when the fourth quarter that Michigan offensive line started owning the line of scrimmage, running the football, got a late score and put the game away. And here, Michigan trying to do it again. Third down and one at the four. 
Mullings dives forward. I don't think he got it. Michigan says he does. Have it. Needs to get to that three-yard line. Boy, that is awfully close. Ransom in there trying to grab at his legs. Downs in there. And they'll give him the first down. It's first and goal. First down and goal for the Wolverines. The ruling on the field on the first down is on the further. So they're going to take a look. 8.02 to go in the fourth quarter. Michigan threatening. Game tied at 10. 10-10, 8.02 to play in the fourth quarter in the game, Ohio State-Michigan, folks. It's been an ugly game for the offenses, but the defense has really stood out. But right now, Davis Ward, the former walk-on quarterback for Michigan, has led the Wolverines all the way down to the three-yard line of Ohio State. 15th play of the drive that started at the Michigan 20. They've eaten up close to nine minutes. First down and goal at the three. Power formation. Warren looking. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Unbelievable. Wow, Jack Sawyer. The hero. Captain Jack. Back and forth, back and forth. Welcome back. The Ohio kid makes the play of his life. They're trying to hit Hogan Hansen on this throwback and watch Jack Sawyer dip out from his in spot. He can't get to the quarterback. He falls back into the route. That play is there for Davis Warren if he puts a little air on it and it's a pick. They run it. Henderson, Ohio State with some new juice. Jack Sawyer, his first career interception. Wow. Thank you for the follow. And another goal line stand for Ohio State. Gus, think about it. They held Oregon to a field goal, gave their offense a chance. Nebraska, fourth down, they stopped them. Penn State, fourth down, they stopped them. And here in the fourth quarter against Michigan, they turn them away. Second down and five at the 17. Howard, can he lead him down the field? Howard drops it off. And that ball dropped by Carnell Tate. A rear drop by this young man. Well, you got to find a matchup now, and you're right. Tate normally very sure-handed. That ball just never got to his hands. And there's Jack Sawyer, that first interception of his career. Couldn't have a bigger one. He'll remember that one the rest of his life. There's no doubt, but you got to pay it off. This offense, which has been stagnant, Gus, over the last couple of series, they need to get something going. Third down and five at the 17, the 7.09 to go in the fourth. Howard with protection. Howard dancing around, steps it up on the move, lowers his shoulder and just crashes forward. Gains four yards. Kenneth Grant with the tackle. And the Buckeyes will have to punt it away. Credit this coverage in the back end. I tell you what, because the protection is there initially. Great block by Travion Henderson right there initially against Barham, and then Howard's got to move. He tries to run for it, but just can't get that line to gain, and they'll have to punt it away and against the wind. Likely this is going to be a pretty short punt here for Ohio State. Michigan's likely to get this ball on their 40, 45-yard line. Joe McGuire needs his best punt of the game. He stands at his own seven. Gets it away. Picked up at the 38 and out of bounds at the 40. So Michigan with good field position. 6-13 remaining in the fourth. Game tied at 10. Back after this. Nearly 160 years, Ohio State has missed two field goals today. And that has been costly. We are still tied at 10. Will Howard 
couple of interceptions, but that favor has been returned from Michigan quarterback Davis Warren, who just threw a giant interception on the goal line, but now it's first down for the Wolverines. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line. Here's a handoff to Mullings, and he'll pick up some nice yardage. Cody Simon with the tackle. Where do they need to get in the field goal range for Zavada? I think that the outskirts, they would need to get to about the 38-yard line. So at this point, they would need, call it 15, 17 more yards going right to left. The wind is going right to left. You could probably stretch Zavada's range to 56, 57 to feel good about it. But again, you're looking at about 17, 18 yards from this point. His career best 56 yards against Northwestern last week. Another run and a first down for the Wolverines. But I tell you what, what they're also going to want to do is chew up this clock. And if they're going to be able to run the football like this, two runs from Mullings to move the chains, then that's exactly where they should sit. You don't have to throw the ball here. You don't have to get cute if you're Michigan, in particular after those last two snaps. That offensive line starting to really come off the ball, Gus. You might as well go right back to Mullings here and see if you can gain positive yards on first down. You're about 10 yards away from being in range for Dominic Zavada. Mullings. And Mullings will lose three and a half, maybe four on the play. Lathan Ransom. There's Zavada. Cool, calm, keeping warm on the sideline. He's 16 for 17 on the season. Second and 12 from midfield. Bredesen in motion. They'll give it to Mullings. And Mullings dives forward. Picks up six. So a big third down coming up right now. It's a massive third down. Here's the thing is if they don't pick it up but get close, they would be on the edge of field goal range. But he does have the wind at his back. He does. But Sharon Moore has always been aggressive. So you wonder if it's somewhere in the fourth and one, fourth and two, would Sharon Moore go for it, try to stay on the field, gain a few more yards for his kicker? Michigan, six of 12 on third down conversions in this game. Third and six. Warren can't turn it over. They'll hand it off. And look at the second effort. Mullings down the sideline, out of bounds at the Ohio State 15. A 27-yard run. He's going to get around the right side. And I tell you what, Michigan's going to get fortunate right here. That's Evan Link with a grab on Jack Sawyer. But Mullings, what a great break. And the strength that he has to get away from the tacklers, run through arm tackles. And now he's down the sideline. Now very much in field goal range. And they can play the clock game now. Zavada is very reliable as a kicker. And they can start to try to bleed this clock out. And Ohio State and Ryan Day are going to have to start thinking about those three timeouts. First down at the Ohio State 17. Jordan Marshall, an Ohio native, freshman, gains three. Let's go downstairs to Jen. Well, Gus, Kalel Mullings told me this week he knew he was going to have to have a big game in this rivalry. He said, it's bittersweet. I'm playing in my last one. Maybe we took for granted how hard winning is. But for us right now, this is our last guaranteed ride together. Getting a win at the shoe, ruining their season, would mean the world to us. This is about legacy for Kalel Mullings and this Michigan football team. Kalel Mullings, 28 carries, 109 yards and a touchdown. Touchdown. We hit the two minute timeout. Game tied at 10. Everything on the line for Ryan Day and his Buckeyes. Like you. Michigan. Second down and seven at the Ohio State 14. Here's another run with Mullings. And he'll get 
to the 10 yard line. Clock stopped. Ohio State with the timeout. 153 to go. A full day of college football rivalries continues next as 16th ranked Arizona State battles Arizona for the Territorial okay. Cup in the prime time at number 18 the, Iowa State and so 24th ranked Ohio State, State, State definitely all right have here to on Fox. Figure it out if we want to win. What a turn of events in Columbus. This Ohio State team came in and they had been dominating opponents since their Oregon loss. Michigan found something out against Northwestern last week. 50 to six win. Third down and two at the nine. There are a minute and 55 seconds remaining in this game. Mullings. Oh, this is a huge mistake. Gus, Ohio State's gonna have to double up on timeouts and waste one. They were misaligned, did not have the right personnel on, and it looked like Ryan Day had to take a timeout there that is giant look at him he, he can tell he's like do we need a timeout they did not have the right personnel on the field they were confused on the field and he had to burn a timeout and i don't think you can even do that you can't take consecutive timeouts illegal substitution 12 on defense five yard penalty will remain third down so that ball will inch closer to That's the Ohio State down. goal line. That was, a, that was a wrong announcement here. So he tried to save it with a timeout. He had just taken one. You can't take back-to-back -back timeouts. So they deal with the penalty with the 12 men on the field, the illegal substitution. That gives them a free first down. Wow. Does Ohio State think about just letting them score here? First down and goal. Mullings, the deep man. Bredesen in motion. Mullings knocked backwards before he gets to the line of scrimmage. That will bring up second and goal. To Imolua with the tackle. Well, this defense, now with that timeout, what, what they're going to rely on here is getting a stop, call a timeout, get another stop on third down. Then the clock will dwindle down. It would be right at about a minute when they would be kicking a field goal, and then Ohio State would have a minute, no timeouts on offense, maybe about 50, 52 seconds, right in there, 54 seconds, Gus. And with the way that the defense has played in these situations, deep in the red zone, you've got to rely on them. I know I bring up, like, do you, do you let them score, but not with the way that the defense has played all year long and the way that they have played in these deep red zone situations. They've already turned Michigan away a couple of times today in these scenarios, and they've got to do it here. The whole season on the line for the Buckeyes in terms of getting into that Big Ten championship game against Oregon. Second down and goal at the six. Kalel Mullings has been a workhorse, number 20 for the Wolverines. He's the deep man out of the eye. Bredesen, the fullback. Mullings and he'll lean forward and get inside the Ohio State five gains two Buckeyes will use their final timeout with 146 to go uh, they've been doing this all year long this was a, a third down play they held Oregon to a field goal gave him a chance in that game Nebraska late in that game in October they got a fourth down stop at Penn State, they got another fourth down stop. They have been so good inside the five. Earlier today, Jack Sawyer, an amazing interception from his defensive end spot. And they were able to get out of that possession, giving up no points. And here they are again, third and goal. No timeouts left, 10-10 game. And this defense is going to be called upon again to make another stop. If you're Michigan at this point, just don't turn it over. Yes, but... I also think you don't want to give them a free 40 seconds. This is not the time to throw. 
I don't think, in particular with the way that Warren has struggled a little bit today in these situations, I think that you lean on the run game again. That 40 seconds is highly valuable to you and your defense in the ensuing possession that you would inevitably face here coming up. Third down and goal at the four. Mullings. They give it to him. And Mullings will get to the three. And that brings up fourth and goal. Jack Sawyer with the tackle. Dominic Zavada. He's kicked a 54-yarder in this game. He had a 56-yarder last week. He's 16 for 17 on the season. A portal pickup from Arkansas State. Man, what an offensive series there from Sharon Moore and that offensive line, Khalil Mullings. Gus, you talked about Khalil Mullins being a workhorse. How about his day now? 32 carries, over 100 yards, and you look up and this Michigan team, what they've been able to do is win the ground game. And you go back to the history of this matchup for the last 22 editions of the game, the team that wins the ground game wins the game. And that's what Michigan has been able to do here today. Jerome Moore. What a coaching performance today. Nobody giving the Wolverines a chance to win this game. 23 and a half point underdogs. This young man has a brilliant mind, is a brilliant coach, and he's just getting started. First year as the full-time coach replacing Jim Harbaugh. There's some sort of issue with the clock right now. The officials were asking for the clock to be. Put it 29 and now they'll run the wind the 42nd clock. This Michigan offense still on the field right now. Michigan with all three timeouts remaining. They'll let that clock wind all the way down and bring Zavada. Onto the field. I mean, you, you would think. I know that they're going to wind it all the way down, maybe take one of those timeouts. The ball is sitting right now on the three yard line. Gus, this is an extra point. Nothing guaranteed with these weather conditions today. We've seen Jake Fielding miss a field goal on this end. Michigan, Michigan, their first charge, 30 seconds at least. And here comes Zavada. They talked about him early in the season. They said the team would just watch him on the sideline when he would go out there and kick field goals and they were amazed at his range and his accuracy right now he has a chance to be the hero dominic zavada from 21 yards away for the lead Good snap, clean hole, got it up, and good! And Michigan takes a 13-10 lead with 45 seconds to go. Ohio State out of timeouts. What a performance from this Michigan team. Just a gutty performance from a team that is, let's face it, Outman today didn't have Colson Loveland, didn't have Will Johnson on the defensive side, and they're taking their shot and hitting. Davis Warren, incredible story. The walk-on, cancer survivor, drives them down, puts the three on the board. If you're wondering what was going on with the clock situation, a helmet had come off. 
on that third down play. And so what they did is they had the 10 second runoff, then started the play clock, which is why it's all the way down to 45 and not around 55 right now. So that was what the confusion was right before that kick from Zvada. 45 seconds remaining. Tommy Doman will kick it away. Caleb Downs make that a Mecca Abuka is the deep man. I tell you what, you talk about testing this Ohio State offense and those skill position players. No timeouts, 45 seconds. The wind is going to be against them. Their kicker. Jaden Fielding has never made a kick over 50 yards in his career. This is going to be an incredible moment here in this series history. They send it deep. Two missed field goals today for Ohio State. Going the direction they're going now, a miss to the right. And coming the opposite way, and he hooked it left. So Fielding has not had the day that he is hoped for. And yet this offense had their best series of the day in a two-minute situation. They did great against Oregon, working their way down the field. There's Fielding on the sideline. And then right before the half, they were able to get the ball on the perimeter, utilize those weapons out there, and march the ball right down for a touchdown before the half. And they're going to have to do it again right here if they want to go to Indianapolis and play for a Big Ten title. No timeouts for the Buckeyes. Down 13 to 10 from their own 25. Howard looking, steps up in the pocket. Sideline throw, high and incomplete. Intended for G. Scott. 40 seconds to go. And this pass rush for Michigan is going to have to show up. This is when Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham and Josiah Stewart and Derek Moore, they've got to be the best players on the field. They've got to present pressure on Will Howard so that he cannot pick apart that secondary from the pocket. Second and 10 of the 25. Howard under pressure, drops it off sideline. Henderson, and he'll go out of bounds. Picks up a few. Actually, they say only one. And Ohio State faced with the third and nine now. 35 seconds remaining in the game. And with no timeouts, you just can't throw this ball short of the sticks here. You can't complete it short of 10 yards. So the middle of the field right over the ball is a no-go for Will Howard. Third and nine of the 26. Here's Howard under pressure. And a timeout call by the Wolverines prior to the throw. I'll tell you what, this defense has been absolutely incredible today. They have stifled the run game of the Buckeyes only three yards per carry, but they've also done a great job of just taking away some of the things on the perimeter just enough. And Sharon Moore knows that they've had the benefit also of a couple of series, Gus, let's face it, where Ohio State had great field position. They got the ball on the 16-yard line. They ran the ball in the middle. They threw a throwback to a tight end, and they ran a delay and then missed a field goal. That series is coming back to haunt the Buckeyes earlier in this game in the third quarter. And now Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator for Michigan, he's got to make a decision. Do I want to blitz Will Howard, or do I need to double Jeremiah Smith? And it might be both. Sending pressure with two guys over number four. Third down and nine of the 26. No timeouts for the Buckeyes. Howard, big play here. Howard in trouble. Rolls, throws. Out of bounds, incomplete. And that brings up fourth down and nine. He wanted to throw it to Travion Henderson right over the ball, but he can't. There's no timeouts. It's a check down right in front of him. But if he completes it to Henderson, the game likely was going to be almost over. So he actually alertly doesn't throw that ball, throws it away. But here's the game. Fourth down. Howard has got to make a throw here. Trips at the top of your screen. Fourth down and nine. Do or die for Ohio State. Howard in trouble. Incomplete. Ohio State turns it over on downs. And the Michigan.
Michigan Wolverines will shock the college football world. That's it. That's the game. Jerome Moore says we didn't cheat this time. All right, there's the play. After the play, our sportsman conduct number one of the defense for simulating shooting a gun. This is his first and least towards this qualification. 15-yard penalty, first down, Michigan. Unbelievable. That's the first down. 23 and a half point underdogs. The Michigan Wolverines come into Columbus. And barring an Ohio State miracle, they will defeat the Buckeyes for the fourth consecutive time. What a performance from this defense. I tell you what, holding Ohio State to 10 points. And Grant, I come back to some of those series where they did not attack on the perimeter. They did not use those players on the outside, but even late when you knew they had to throw it and everything was spread out, they didn't have time to throw it on the outside. They were double covering Jeremiah Smith. No points in the second half for Ohio State. A 10-10 game turns into a 13-10 loss. Michigan will defeat Ohio State for the fourth consecutive time and denies the Buckeyes a Big Ten title game shot. Kalel Mullings, 116 Good yards game. rushing and a touchdown. Zabata, two field goals, including the game-winning 21-yarder. And the Wolverines win it 13-10. Shock and all tears of joy. The agony of defeat. And downstairs with a jubilant, victorious Coach Moore is our Jenny Tab. Gus, thank you. Coach, you have a sign in your office. First thing you see every day. What are you going to do? This guy. This guy. What are you going to do to beat Ohio State? And you did it today. How did you do it, Coach? These guys, man. Guys like Mason Graham, guys like Kenneth Grant, Josiah Stewart, Derek Moore, the offensive line. I mean, you talk about a gritty performance by a bunch of guys. I mean, I love these dudes. These guys are the heart of our program. This is why you come to Michigan. Right here, guys like this. Win this game. 3-0. Let's go, baby. Love you. Oh. Talk to him. Talk to him. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you have your moment because the emotion from your head coach is apparent, and I've seen it from so many guys tonight. What you guys did, your D-line, their inability to really get anything going in the run game, how did you do it? I mean, that's always the mindset of this game, you know. We know it's going to be one up front. Oh, we pride ourselves on of that on here at Michigan, but, you know, that's that's what we are. That's what Michigan does, man. And that's what we do first of all. Let's talk to us. And folks, something interesting is going on on the field right now. Michigan tried to plant their flag in the middle of the Ohio State field, and the Buckeyes rushed right to them. And now there's some Fight. skirmishes going on on the field. An unsportsmanlike gesture by the Wolverines unnecessary they've won the game no need to be disrespectful just needs to grab that flag or else this is going to continue to get nasty. Another fight. 
ugly scene. Incredibly ugly scene for a beautiful rivalry. It was a good game. It really was. But now everyone wants to take fit and throw it in everyone's face. Get these guys in the locker room. Gus, you just hate to see this. It, what a incredible Michigan game. won the game. They didn't need to plant the flag in the middle of the O. I mean, that's always that's you know, disrespectful. It is, but it's always part of it. Baker Mayfield did it in this stadium, and it not just doesn't say it's right. I, I'm, you know what I'm saying. I get it, and and at the same time, I tell you what, this is a great rivalry. It's a great American rivalry, and it's it's ugly the way that this has ended. Let's go downstairs to Jen. Gus, thanks. Kalal, I know it's a lot to ask you just to reflect on the scenes that we just witnessed. Uh, what's going through your head right now? Yeah, uh, you know, it was for such a great game. You, you, you hate to see stuff like that after the game. Um, you know, that's just bad for the sport, bad for college football. But at the end of the day, you know, some people got to they got to learn how to lose, man. You can't can't be fighting and stuff just because you lost a game. You know, all that fighting. We had 60 minutes. We had four quarters to do all that fighting. And now people want to talk and fight. That's wrong. You know, this is bad for the game. Classless, in my opinion. Uh, you know, and, and, and people, people got to be better. You were such a difference maker today. And I know you spoke to me this week about how much this rivalry means to you. For you guys to do it again, how proud are you of what your team did on the field today? You know, I, I'm, I'm so proud of all, all the boys out here, all the boys at home, the entire program, you know, through the ups and downs, fighting all season. You know, we, we haven't necessarily had the season that we wanted to have. But, you know, through going through those ups and downs, some things don't change. And, uh, you know, we came out knowing what we had to do, knowing that, you know, it was possible. And if we played our game and did what we needed to do, we could come out with a win. And we did just that. So thank you. Kalef. Thank you so much. Yep. Class act. Great effort by that young man, by the Wolverines, 13 to 10. The final score, Michigan beats Ohio State. Coming up next on Fox after this break, Arizona State, Arizona for Jenny and Joel. I'm Gus Johnson saying so long from Columbus.